He needed rest for his body. He needed rest for his soul. And so he was to return to the home away from home, Capernaum. For there was something about being around the Sea of Galilee that brought rest to our Lord. He needed rest. He needed rest in preparation for the greatest assignment ever laid upon anyone. To be identified with our sin, though pure, and to experience the most awful thing that personality can ever experience, separation from God. We need not pity his physical death. We need to sympathize with it. But we need not view that in excess. For men, mere mortals, have died bravely and gladly given their life. But let us not forget that his physical suffering was accentuated because he bore a load that no one ever bore. And more heavily so, because all of our sins were laid upon his head. And just as God cast our sins behind his back, he cast Jesus behind his back and he felt for an eternal moment which was a moment of eternity separation from God now with this serious assignment ahead of him he heads for a place of rest for all men need when taking upon them great missions, preparation, and rest. And wouldn't you know it, someone is going to vex him over something trivial. Matthew records it this way. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? And he said, Yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him saying, or he anticipated him, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? And Peter said unto him, Of strangers. Jesus said unto him, Then are the children free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, and cast in hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. That take, and give unto them for me and thee. Trivial. Trivial because it was not something that was mandated, not even by the Mosaic Law, although it once provided money for the tabernacle. And after the Babylonian captivity, it was for all males over the age of 20 a tribute tax for the temple. But it could not be required of Jesus. It was not a requirement for him. For as he explains to Peter, he is the Son of God. He is not a stranger. And therefore, it was not binding upon him. Every year, at about the time of February and March, which in the Jewish calendar year is the month, is the month of Adar, respectable tax collectors for the temple, not 
tax collectors for Rome, but tax collectors for the temple would go into all regions of Palestine, of Israel, and there exact this tribute tax. For it was, as Moses had written, redemption money. You'll find that is, it was money that pro was provided, that provided for the daily sacrifices for everyone. It was atonement money. In Exodus 30 and 11, we read, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord. When thou numberest them, that there be no plague among them, when thou numberest them, this they shall give every one that passeth among them that are numbered half a shekel, and after the shekel of the sanctuary... And half a shekel shall be the offering of the Lord. Everyone that passes among them that are numbered from twenty years old and above shall give an offering unto the Lord. The rich shall not give more and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel. When they give an offering unto the Lord to make an atonement for your souls. Thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation that it may be a memorial unto the children of Israel before the Lord to make an atonement for your souls. There was another reason and it's found in this passage here why it should not be required of him for the very fact that it was redemption money. And Jesus had no sin. And he had already declared in Jerusalem that he was the Son of God. So to have submitted to this requirement would look like or look as if he were a sinner. A son of God and not a sinner. And so we have a dilemma. What's he going to do? Well, for one thing, he's not going to make an issue over a trivial matter. Even if it cast a doubt upon his own life. Even if it admits, even if by virtue of his submission, it looks as if he himself is a sinner too. Most men make issues over trivialities. The Lord does not. It is pitiful that it is something trivial that vexes the soul of the Son of God. But nevertheless, He meets it in dignity and in grace and in submission trivial though it may be. And he says unto Peter, not after explaining that he was not subject to this, the children of a king do not, the king does not come to the household of his own and say, give me tribute. My dad never came to me and asked me for anything. He supplied everything. He didn't ask me for room and board. He didn't ask me for money for clothes. He didn't ask me for money for food. Jesus was explaining who he was. And even at the age of 12 years old, he said, I must be about my father's business. This is my father's house. And so he's making it clear unto Peter, who may have spoken rather quickly again, so as not to stir the authorities concerning Jesus. Nevertheless, notwithstanding, Jesus said unto Peter, lest we should offend them, pay the tax. Pay the tax. 
many times down through the years, we've done something or done, we've done several things to keep from offending the authorities. Sometime we have given, given doubly and triply to keep those in authority from being offended. And up until we were blacklisted, we did not take or did not place within our budget support for a servant who was actually sin of God, lest we offend them. We made no issue over trivialities. Not that it did any good. Not that it ever does any good. But God does not want you and I to make an issue over marginal things. Be it doctrine or religious practices. And so he submitted himself for he was a good citizen of the kingdom, the very son of God himself, and he was a good citizen of Israel. Why the miracle? Peter could have gone out and earned two days' wages, for that's what it amounted to. 75 to or $150 to $200. You say, that's not much, but you and I, when we get a tax bill of $150 to $200, we don't exactly look at it like it's not much. We think rather seriously about it. And one of the most pinching things when buying a new car is paying the sales tax. But we pay it. And God doesn't want us to make an issue over it. He wants us to be a good citizen. But this is unusual because Jesus used his powers miraculously. He used the power of God miraculously. And other than cursing the fig tree, this is the only incident. There's only two incidents where he used it in this incident apparently for himself. And so the liberal scholars are all upset about it and they say he, Peter really didn't go out and catch his fish. What he was saying to Peter was, Peter, go back to your fishing and out of the mouth of the fishes pay your tax. He didn't say that. Liberals, you're in so much trouble. Always skirting the, mir the miraculous. I mean great liberals. That's obvious, isn't, isn't it, to the simple observer that he didn't say any such thing because it's so specific. Go thou to the sea and cast and hook and take up the fish that first cometh up, cometh up. I don't know why the miracle. It's just a miracle. Maybe it's to show us that he will work with us miraculously in the things that are trivial also. Amen. Did he not pro provide with Peter also for Peter also who owed the tax? A small tax requiring perhaps only two days labor and yet he supplied it miraculously for himself and for Peter. He's with us, you know. This great, miraculous, working God is with us in the trivial things also. He just wants us to have the right attitude about it. He wants us to be Christian about it. He wants us not to offend unless it's necessary. And if it's necessary, die before you bend. But don't die over something you can bend over. I'm not going to do it. I'll just not do it. And we make a fool out of ourselves and offend unnecessarily because of our carnality. He doesn't want us to do it. 
he was later to upset the money changers who, whose coffers were filled with these shekels. Because this was such a great treasury that greed was rampant in the temple. And in the role as judge, he sent things flying and upset the money changers. But another principle is in effect. Not the principle of his submission, his submission, submitting as a good Jew. The last thing I wonder about is why is it that only Matthew records it? But then upon second thought, was not Matthew a tax collector himself? Peter didn't record it. Luke didn't record it. And John didn't record it. But Matthew did. For Matthew had seen him before. Matthew had seen him come to his own tax table and pay his taxes for himself and for others also without murmuring and without hatred and respecting Matthew while he did it. And so when this happened to Peter, he caught Matthew's attention. It's where the Holy Spirit would alert him specifically because it meant an awful lot to him that Jesus made no issue over trivialities. God help us to fight for the right when it really involves principle, not on things trivial. Father, seal to our hearts this simple message. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.